few weeks ago, I watched a video by my good friend Julian Baird, all about a book by Ross Hoddinett and Mark Bauer called 52 Assignments for Landscape Photography. And I was so inspired by that video that I went out and bought a copy of the book myself. And here it is. Anyway, a few weeks later, I got this message from Jules. Hi, Chris. I know you've watched the latest episode of On My Bookshelf, in which I talk about this book here, 52 Assignments of Landscape Photography. Now, while I was reading the book, I could have picked any number of assignments for myself, but there were a couple that I thought might be good for you. Now, I know you love a good challenge, so here's what I'm going to do. I want you to pick up a copy of this book, and I challenge you to assignment number 14, Get Closer. It's all about creating intimate landscapes. Now, you're well known for your big vista shots of the Lake District, so I'd be really interested to see how you tackle this assignment. Now, Jules knows me very well, and his choice of intimate landscapes is a really good one because it's a particular weakness of mine, and it's going to be really interesting to see how I get on trying something that I'm not particularly good at. I have done intimate landscape photography videos in the past, but they haven't gone very well. But recently, I have been practicing, so fingers crossed, this one should go a lot better. Now both Jules and I agree that this book is an absolute gold mine for a YouTuber. If you think about it, if you do one video per week, then there's a whole year's worth of material right here. So my plan today is to try and get three shots using three different subjects. And after each shot, I'm going to challenge one of my friends in the vlogging community to have a go and assignment Simon all of their own. So let's look a little bit more in depth at what this challenge actually means. And I'm going to read you the introduction. So it's assignment 14, and it's called Get Close. And it says, photographing the intimate landscape typically involves isolating just a few select elements rather than capturing an extensive view. This gives you the freedom to be less conventional and more creative. For this assignment, swap your wide angle lens for a short telephoto and look closely for detail, texture, structure, shape, or form. I think the conditions today are absolutely perfect for this type of photography. In the past, when I've done close-up work, I've found that the soft diffused light that you get on overcast days is absolutely perfect. When I've tried to shoot in the past with harsh direct sunlight, I found that I've got far too darker shadows and the whole scene is far too contrasty. And Ross and Mark make the exact same observation in the field notes for this assignment. It says, low contrast light often suits this style of photography. As you don't need a great light or blazing skies, this is a good assignment for a gray day. Perfect. Before we get started, I just want to talk briefly about the authors of this book. Now, both Ross and Mark are highly respected landscape photographers, and they both feature in another book that I bought that Jules reviewed called The Masters of Landscape Photography, along with Hans Strand, the master of the intimate landscape. And this book recommends Hans as one of the guys you should check out when you're looking for inspiration for this assignment. Allow me to introduce you to the location for my first shot. This is Nipescar Common on the eastern edge of the Lake District National Park. And from up here, you get fantastic views of High Street and the Far Eastern Fells. And up here, there's also this exposed limestone. And I've always wanted to shoot up here because I think it makes for fantastic foreground interest. The big problem that I have, though, is there's no background here. But that doesn't matter in this assignment. One of the things that I found recently that really helps me to take better intimate shots is that you have to really work the scene. You have to spend a long time looking for your composition. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put the telephoto lens on my camera and then I'm just going to spend a little bit of time exploring this area, seeing if I can find a composition that works.
Now I'm not going to pretend that I find this kind of photography easy. In fact, I find it really, really difficult. I really, really have to concentrate. And the big problem with filming yourself is it can be really distracting. You've only ever got half of your mind on your photography. The other half is thinking about the video side of things. So what I decided to do was to pack up all my video gear and put it in my bag, and then just to spend some time exploring the area, seeing if I could find a composition. And after much searching, and to my great relief, I finally found something that I like. While I was looking for a composition, I eventually made it down to this wall here that separates Nipe Scar Common from this small wood. And the limestone here is covered in a green moss, so I started to look for a composition that featured that. Eventually I found something, I found two pieces of limestone that were separated by a gap and to my eye that looked like a gorge and so this shot is kind of my version of a landscape in miniature. <laughs> With that shot finally in the bag, it's now time for me to challenge one of my fellow vloggers. And I'm gonna start with my good friend down in Buding Cornwall, Tom Peters. Now I noticed recently that Tom was shooting with a 50 millimeter prime, and I myself shoot an awful lot of 50 millimeters. It really helps me to eliminate distractions and to simplify a scene. And so I'm gonna challenge Tom to assignment number 22, Nifty 50. I think the reason I struggled here so much is it's incredibly chaotic. I found it almost impossible to isolate a single subject. It reminds me very much of what it's like shooting in the woodland. And that is exactly where I'm headed next. Now then, woodland, not my natural habitat. You see, I like to photograph lakes. It's why I live in the Lake District. If I wanted to photograph trees, then I'd live in the Tree District. Stands to reason, doesn't it? Unfortunately for me, the woodland is really good for intimate landscape photography. See, the problem with woodland is it's very chaotic and it can be difficult to isolate a subject. So what can help is if we focus in on smaller details and textures and patterns and shapes and that kind of thing. And so that's what I'm going to try and do now. I do want to talk a little bit about what happened yesterday when I was at Nipe Scar Common. You see, when I started exploring the area, I noticed there were lots of little bits of grass and moss and lichen that were growing on the limestone itself. And so I struck upon an idea that I wanted to isolate one of those um, and to show a story, a st the struggle for life, if you like. And of course, it didn't matter how hard I looked, I couldn't find one. And because I was being so single-minded, I, I wonder how many other compositions I walked past, how many things I missed because I was looking for one specific thing. And so today I've decided to have a completely different approach. Now I arrived here at the woodland at, uh, so where am I? Uh, I'm at Grisdale Forest in the center of the Lake District. I arrived here about two hours ago and I decided rather than looking for something specific, I would just take a walk through the forest, see if any compositions came and slapped me in the face. And of course, I found precisely nothing. So that leaves me with two possible options. I can either go home with nothing, which I don't really want to do, or I can change my approach. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on a small section of the forest. In fact, I'm gonna focus on this 200 yard stretch of forest track and I'm going to try and study that intimately and see if I can't find something that way. So that approach of studying a small piece of the landscape closely seems to have paid off almost immediately. Two hours wandering around, found nothing. 15 minutes here, having a little look-see around, and I think I found a composition that might work. So what I've got is I have a composition with two trees, essentially. And I have one tree in the foreground and then a second tree in the background. And then I have two other elements towards the edges of the frame. 
I have a third tree on the left hand side and then I have a mossy boulder on the right hand side. And so I, th I think this is what is meant when we talk about intimate landscapes, when we're picking out little details, because that's exactly what I've done here. As I said yesterday, I want to share some of this misery with my fellow vloggers. And the next person I'm going to challenge is Sam Bowes. Now for Sam, I've picked assignment number 12, which is change the view. Now this assignment recognizes that most shots are shot at head height. And so it's there to encourage people to shoot either very low to the ground, or if you have a huge Benro tripod like I do, even above head height. Now I hear that the good doctor got a new tripod for Christmas, and so that should come in very handy for this assignment. At this point, I think we should address the title of the video. You see, it's called Challenge Yourself, not Challenge Myself. And what I mean by that is I now want you to go and grab a copy of this book, and there is an Amazon affiliate link in the description below, so you can find it. And I want you to then pick out an assignment that's going to specifically help you with your photography. And then I'd like to invite you to send me your images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a page on my website, as I have done before, about the 52 assignments of landscape photography and showcase your work. And what Jules and I are also going to do is we will look through each of the images as they arrive. And when we post them up onto my website, we're going to have a little comment, just a little bit of a feedback about how well we think you've done in the assignment. It's not a critique. What we're trying to do, and what we're always trying to do, is to encourage you guys to get out with your cameras. And so that's what we're prepared to do. So if you're interested in doing that, details about how you can send me your images are in the description below. I have had my fill of woodland for one day, so I'm now going to head home. And tomorrow I'm going to head out to my third location and get my final image for this challenge. And I'll also be challenging another vlogger to one of the 52 assignments. It's been over a week since I was at Winlatter. I've taken a break from my challenge for two reasons really. First reason being I've been very busy, so I've had two workshops, a one-to-one -one, and a haircut. And the second reason was I wasn't very happy with how the challenge had been going. The two shots that you've seen so far, I put an awful lot of effort into those. I spent a very, very long time looking for composition and then I wasn't very happy with the results at all. So I took a little bit of time off. And I had a look at some work that other people had done and I came to the conclusion that I hadn't been getting tight enough into the subject. And I also hadn't been following Ross and Mark's advice. I hadn't been, you know, focusing on texture and shape and pattern and that sort of thing. So in between now and then I've done a little bit of practice. You may have seen it in my video that I posted, I think it was a week ago now where I was at Rider Water and I went and did some, some practice for some intimate landscapes and I feel ready to come back out again and have another go. So this morning I've come to a small patch of woodland not far from Yew Tree Tarn in the Central Lake District and I'm going to try two shots here. The first one is of the bark of this tree. What I like about this is I really like the texture. The bark itself has a very very coarse texture but it's also covered in interesting lichen and moss and so there's a um, wonderful uh, combination of textures. And so I've, I've kind of got a transition where on the left-hand side it uh, has very little, most of the bark is exposed, and then that transitions into lichen and then eventually into moss on the right-hand side. Uh, so I've set the camera up, I'm at about 120 mil, and I've filled the frame with the, the um, tree, and I'm just focusing in on the textures um, of the bark, the lichen and the moss.
The final one of my fellow vloggers that I'm going to challenge to one of these assignments is Jamie Overland. Now, Jamie and I have quite similar styles. We both favour compositions with very strong subjects, and as a result, we tend not to use a great deal of foreground interest. And so I'm going to challenge Jamie to assignment number one, to the fore. And this assignment is all about getting low to the ground and using foreground interest to add extra depth to your images. For my final shot, I've come right down to the edge of this little stream and I'm focusing in on an area where the water is breaking over some stones. So what I've done is I've honed right in on that and I've set my shutter speed to around a third of a second. And that's allowing me to take shots, blurring the motion of the water, but also to capture some of its texture. So that's me done with this challenge. How did I get on? Well, if I'm honest, I don't really enjoy spending hours and hours looking for compositions only to come away with mediocre images. But if I don't keep practicing, if I don't keep working on my weaknesses, then I'm never gonna improve as a photographer. And for that reason, this book is absolutely excellent and it's the reason why I would recommend it. This is full of assignments that allow you to identify particular parts of landscape photography, particularly bits that you're not very good at, and give you some help as to how to improve those. So if you wanna take part in this, I would recommend you grab yourself a copy of this book. And there is a link in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. Um, it's not my link, it's Julian's. And um, get yourself a copy of this book, do one of the challenges and send us your images. And like I say, Jules and I will try and give you a little bit of feedback on how we think you've done in the challenge and we'll post them up onto my website.